Hello and welcome to my fifth part of the tutorial series how to create a fantasy weapon for a video game. Today we will learn how to implement this um, patterns here into the hammer. As you can see the pattern follows the shape of the hammer <coughs> and, the sham and the shape is round. And I will show you how to prepare this today and how to implement this into this model. The same you will see how to do this here in this element. As you can see the pattern is not straight, it's a little bit deformed. And I will show you how to do this in 3D code. And the next time we will learn how to retopologize this object in the sixth part. Okie dokie, so let's go. Okay, um, the audience who are following my tutorials since uh, episode one maybe knows my my concept artwork for this hammer. I will show it to you, it's here. This is my concept art. And as you can see, we see the um, a kind of ruins here at this location and there, and some elements are here too. <coughs> I have created these ruins in Photoshop and used for them a pattern. Um, this is a, a stripe here, uh, that is uh, repeating every time and I use it here as, an, uh, as a template for these elements. Uh, today I will show you how to clean up this template here in Photoshop and uh, use it as a projection map for my hammer to project it here onto this place and maybe there. <coughs> Uh, for some of you, maybe it's, um, it's, uh, it's listening very easy to do such things, but it's not always easy to do it, especially if you are uh, doing uh, stuff like this. Um, these elements are not um, straight, they are a little bit uh, yeah, stretched, <coughs> and it's not easy to place the uh, thing on these elements. Yeah. Um, I will show you two ways how to do these uh, elements. The first one will be based on a projection, as I said, and the second one will be based on a 3D object that is uh, that can be created in 3D code. Um, the second version is interesting for people who are not uh, who not owns uh, Photoshop or are using um, other tools to create 2D elements. Okay. A lot of uh, talk, uh, let's start to create our pattern. I will take my, my template here to create the final resolution. To, to, to do this, I will check where my template begins to repeat. To do this, I go, <coughs> I go into this template and will we'll, um, copy the part where it begins to repeat. To see uh, the image better, I will switch my background on. It's a layer here with a color. It's a white and so you can see it better. Um, as you can see, my, my repeat starts here at this, as this elements um, here and there. This is the pattern that is repeating. So I will, I will uh, select it as good as possible <coughs> and then I will use it as a template. I copy it now into the my memory and make a new image that is very small. I need later a bigger one, so I will increase the resolution of this image to 512 pixels. Now, um, as uh, the bigger the image is, the better. Um, I will show you today how to make a non-destructive um, template that means I will not paint <coughs> paint my pattern uh, manually by by a brush I could do this for example here I can uh, uh, switch my layer to 20% or to 10% um, I do it to 15% and now it's uh, seen a little bit it's um, uh, nearly unseen it's uh, the opacity is very low and I use a new layer and begin to to paint a cleaner version. This uh, would be the, <coughs> the regular way, but what I do, 
I will use the vector graphics tool here. It's a it's a feather here, as I know. I hope it's the right right uh, right uh, name for it. And I start to click and set uh, the form, the shape I need to create my my object. This is uh, the first one, and uh, the good uh, thing uh, in in uh, vector graphics is you can always um, change the shape later. So in with bitmaps this is not possible, but you can here choose the points and create new shapes or or make it make them uh, looking better than before. So this layer <coughs> is the one uh, that it will be created when I start to create uh, the new shape. So what I do now is I will create all the parts I need and later I will show you how to repeat them. So first, um, yeah, the next one will be one of these parts here. <coughs> okay. Maybe I get a new shape because, uh, as you know, this is a quadratic shape, so I can take one of the default shapes here and set them from pixels to shape. And now I am able to create a, a, qu a quad or a, yeah. And now um, I can rotate it here by using the transform tool in Photoshop. Yes. <coughs> and I can now move it uh, up here and the, the other one move it down. I will correct the, the inner shape later. The same I will do by using it and copy just to the other, to the opposite side. Okay. Always when I'm using this, um, Photoshop is uh, copying the layers. <coughs> later I will merge them together to a one shape like this. I've pressed uh, Control E like equal and before I do this I can select the layers and press Control E and then all the layers will be merged to one layer. This is very nice and saves a lot of time. So I will continue to, to create the, the left parts the other parts <coughs> okay and and now I will I will merge them again and start to make it repeatable here at this uh, at this part before I do this I will start to to um, I will will make this image quadratic because it's uh, it's nicer for me later to to repeat it Okay, to do this, I will um, I use Control E or, or Control I in English, and now I set the the height to 512 too. Now it will be a little bit stretched, but this is not a problem. Now this image is when I select the whole image, you can see it. It's 512 by by 512, yeah, in resolution. Okay, and now I I set the shape a little bit better or nicer to to get the right to get the right image that I'm needing. This part here needs a little bit more time to be created so I will forward this to save you a little bit time. Okay, as you can see, I've prepared my shape for the next uh, step to make it repeatable. I take the shape here, the, the, the black one, this one is not needed anymore, take it and move it down by a half size, means 256 pixels down. And then I um, duplicate this layer and take 
these shapes here and read them. Okay, and now I have the same the same uh, shape here, and this here is a seam where two shapes are coming together. This uh, I, I will merge them together to one layer again. Now I'm able to 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 set <coughs> sorry to set them in the right uh, for the right shape to make the right shape to reproduce it. So what I do now is first I must I must make them corners because only if these points are corners you can move the shape here. The whole, uh, the whole, the whole uh, stroke. To do, uh, to make a point to a corner in Photoshop, you switch to this tool here, and click on one point, and then it will be made to a, to a corner. Yeah. shape is going here beneath the other one or below the other one I don't know beneath is it right in English I hope so as you can see it needs a lot of time to do this but it's worth to do it okay now I take this one to this position no here to this position and this one to this position you will see why and now I take it both here and merge my shapes together because they are two separate shapes here um, now I l delete the points that are not needed anymore in this case the shape will be straight here okay um, <clears throat> this shape is already repeatable. Um, I can test it by copying this uh, to to a new image. Move it here. I will I will scale the image a little bit down. Oops, sorry. Proportion. Um, again. Okay. Now I can show you that it's already that it is already repeatable here. So this way, maybe there's a small mistake. I will check it. Yes, but you can see it's always nearly rep uh, repeatable. So now I take this shape and move it a little bit down to get the the right position here. And again, I must correct the distance a bit. And as we can, as we have seen, the points are not really equal. So what I do now is I will move them here to the same position. And then it would it should be okay. I hope. 
and again I I will take it to check it out. Okay, copy it into my memory and make a new layer, move it down and look for the right. No, it's not right. Um, what you can do here at this uh, part, you can create a smart object for the pattern. When you are creating a smart object, you can go into this object and and make it rep uh, repeatable here. Uh, what I mean is, the smart object is the instant um, representation of this image. So I will do it by by changing the canvas size, save it down, and now you can see I have this image here. Okay, and. I move it to this position and the other side to this position and now I have the ability to see the to see, to see the problem here what is uh, appearing here in my uh, repeating so I go into the smart object and correct the, the, the point where this uh, problem appear First I use an open uh, background to see it better and and now I will move it to the right, save it and see now it's looking it's looking better. Position two and I do the same here and the second one to the right. For any reason it's it's happening this way. I hope I can correct it. Wait. Mm. Here and now the next one. Sometimes it's only one pixel. No oh dear. Okay, it looks good. So I will correct now the other one. Move it to right. Yeah, and there is one one that have to be corrected too. Yeah, now it looks very nice. This this is good. Okay, um, this is the time to to do a small correction here. As you can see, I am using I have a hole here, and I would put a hole into this one copy it, merge it, and now I scale the second one and say it has to be subtracted. Now I copy the subtracted one, move it to here, and save it. Now it's okay. Now uh, it should, uh, should be repeated. I will show it to you. Yeah. New image and new one, second one, and it looks good. This here is now our pattern for this for this element. Yeah. <coughs> to use the pattern in in uh, 3D code, I must uh, invert this one here. Um, invert the image. So what I do in Photoshop is I just take uh, take a new layer effect and say invert it's here now I invert this image because the white elements will be extruded and the black ones not so when I'm using an extrusion later uh, then it works well so okay now I save it um, save it as in PNG I use PNG because uh, it's not, uh, uh, yeah, lossless. It's lossless. Not X rune. It's for the German one. It's uh, um, hammer rune, and it's not round. It's the one. Okay, the image, and move back to <coughs> 3D code. To project my image onto objects, I use a new. I use a masks and click on the new. 
Now I can in, uh, implement a new mask into 3D code to use it. Hammer rune is my object. Um, you cannot see it here because it will be not automatically uh, switched on. So you have to click on the new image here and now you see there it appear. I click on reset to see the origin, original resolution. Um, I will tell you some some points, some uh, tips for the navigation <coughs> when you are working with masks first time. First, I uh, suggest to switch to from the perspective view to the orthogonal orthographic view. It's much better because you don't have uh, perspective uh, problems when you are projecting your image. So when you are switching to the side view with the 4 key, for example, then you can uh, project it better. Um, the reset button will reset your image to the origin size. The origin size means one by one pixel. So you, what you can see here is a, a repeating representation of your pattern. As you remember, our pattern is looking this way here. So it's quadratic. And here you see the repeatable elements of this. To navigate your mask, you, you, you can use these buttons here. The first one rotates your mask. The second one moves your mask. This one is zooming your mask to the right, right uh, size. This one is stretching your mask if you need it. And to get the origin position, you just click on reset, and all will be resetted. With two, with these two uh, buttons, you can flip in the x, uh, x uh, axis or flip into the epsilon axis. Okay. Um, as you can see, when I'm <coughs> when I'm zooming uh, here, I can zoom the mask. So, as you can see, when I'm zooming, I can the mask zoom with my view. So when I'm clicking here outside of my object and clicking on and pressing my Alt key, then it's zooming together. To switch this off for any reason, you can click on Unlock, and then your view is just view zooming. When you click on Unlock again, you can zoom both. As this function can be used, these functions here can be used by keys too. So when you are pressing the shift key together and move your mouse outside of your object here, then you can zoom into your projection. And then if you are pressing the control key, you can rotate your projection. And the alt key zooms again the complete view, yes. And when you are clicking switch, uh, shift and control together, then you can stretch your image. So shift and control stretch your image, control rotate your image and shift can move your image, uh, zoom your image. To, to move this projection you click on the right mouse button. With the right mouse button you can move just your projection mask. Okay, these are the tips to, to use it without this menu. So I reset it again and come back to my to my projection. <coughs> and now we see um, it's not very easy to create such a um, pattern to for this object. The the best way or the easiest way I switch I shape I save this first. X room, I save it to hammer room. Okay, to load it in later if needed. So it's very easy to use a projection on flat objects like this here, like this element on the of the hammer. So when I'm when I'm using uh, extrude and I want to extrude some things, then then it's very nice and easy to use it here. Oh, it's the wrong one. Uh, I'm in the wrong uh, layer. I must switch to the hammer. The hammer, the hammer, the hammer, 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 hammer head. Yeah, this one it is. The hammer head. And then I will switch off my highlight because the highlight shows me the selected layer. Maybe we will need it later, but at the moment not. So 
when I when I'm in extrude and I am in the right layer and have the right brush I can extrude my elements my masks as you can see the, the height of the extrusion will be controlled by my depth um, you must need a very important thing about the depth here the depth represents the percentage pressure or the percentage of your brush size so what I mean is if you have 100 and you use extrude I switch to this button 100 and use extrude then your button size will control the extrusion of your of your mask so when I'm pressing here and you see the red the red curve there then my extrusion is exactly the half of my brush why the half because my brush is round and tips onto my uh, surface so I can see only one half of my extrusion <coughs> and this um, size is 100% so when I when I change it to 50% then my curve changes too as you can see the curve is now 50% of the half of this brush so when I'm extruding again I see <coughs> it's mm, lower than before okay that's the explanation to this so what does this mean for for our object as you can as you have seen when I'm extruding the extrude is around here at the corners it's because of the brush the brush is round at the at the border so what I how can I solve this I could solve this by using a much smaller brush let's say I will use a two a brush with a two radius and 100% that means it's 100% of the half of this brush so now I am extruding it and now it looks nice and have this extrusion and uh, it's very important it have a very nice corner here no round corner it's nearly clean okay if you want a much sharper corner you have to reduce your brush radius and extrude it but the problem is as soon as you are reducing your brush radius the corner begins to be sharp but the extrusion is raising down it's going down yeah so what to do to solve this you just go here to the depth and say you want for example a five time bigger extrusion so you type in 500 percent now you can see the red curve represents the new uh, depth size the depth size is now 500 percent of the half of your brush so when i'm now extruding I have a much bigger extrusion as you can see so I do it by another example I do and type in 2000 very high and now I'm extruding again and you can see it's happening nothing why does it why there is nothing happening nobody knows it Christoph does not know the two so let's see what happened when I'm using the selection here instead of a brush because normally when I'm when I'm using the selection all works like expected ah small maybe a small uh, surprise from 3d code anyway okay another example I select now the, ex the element now it will be extruded by 100 percent now I do and type in 500 and selection and extrude it again and now you can see it's five times as big as than before this happening normally <coughs> this is happening here in the rectangle selection only unfortunately I hoped it happened in my brush tools too but it's as I see it happening only here when you are selecting a rectangle sorry for this okay so you can see it is much bigger we will we will need this later for um, to, to project to, to project our object here on on this hammer front 
because it's nearly impossible to do it by just by a selection and we show it to you let's say you are pleased with your with your size here and you are pleased with all, with all other things and you want to project your your runes or your object here on this element so what to do is you are say you let's say you're going 50 percent because i'm going into this and um and using your projection so what i do now is i take this here project and now it go out to to hide your mask by the way just use show hidden or auto what does it mean hidden means the mask is still there but cannot be seen yeah auto means as soon as i am using my brush the mask disappear i like it sometimes and shown will be always shown as before what I like is hidden because I can edit my mask and it's, it does not disturb my work so what we see here is our projection onto this object it looks not bad but it's a little bit stretched by the perspective okay it's here in this case you can see it very nice when you are switching uh, when you are turning your camera and see here the chain part looks it has this size and here it's much bigger yeah because of the projection problem so what you could do and make undo what you could do is you place it here and make smaller smaller representations so <clears throat> I make it auto and you can turn your camera a bit and you must be very careful because the camera is turning not only in the Z axis it's just turning everywhere so and now you could move your mask exactly down here and make another projection that's okay but not nice as you can see it works a little bit but as you can see it makes problems here at this position yeah because the masks are overlapping so what could be done to make it nicer yeah i have a solution for it and we'll show it to you first i make it undo and again undo okay so what to do i am creating a helper object this is one way to do it. Maybe some of you knows more ways, but I do this one, okay? I do a helper object. So I create a new layer and say rune helper. So you can do it like you want. Anyway, the rune helper object needs a little bit more, a little bit more resolution. The resolution should be the same like the hammerhead, so it's four times. So I click on my resolution button and say yes, double size resolution, and again double my resolution. Now it's four times the new layer. So what to do now? I create the 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 helper object. The helper object represent is represented by a primitive. In my uh, situation, it's a it's a cube. So I take now my cube here and move it a little bit to the side beside my, my object and now I let it be like this and say apply. Now the cube is created, you can see it by switching to, uh, to another uh, a tool like extrude and now we have this nice cube here. Okay, I will now create uh, an extrusion of my rune on this cube here. It's, uh, the, the point is you, you must you, you need to try to make it as uh, as re uh, repeatable as possible. So what you do is the same like in Photoshop but you do it here. So I take my mask I will show it to you. I will take my mask and now I'm switching to a different tool I use I like to use my spline 
selection because it's my I am in this mode I have more possibilities to to select I can click it by using points and the points are editable so I can correct this here now I click on escape to make this editable my selection is projected directly on my cube this happen because in this small option window there is an option what says attached to the surface and then you can detach from the surface if you want but by default attached by the surface and it moves with the object okay so this is only here as uh, at the moment you see it's a it's a sphere but or a circle but i need a, a square so what i do is i click on my right mouse button and click twice on these points and the points are changing their appearing to different modes. The modes are repeatable so uh, as long as you click they switch always to the to the mode you need. So as you can see it's now a, a square and I have now the possibility to move the points to the right position. Now I switch to shown because when I'm clicking then I can see my mask. Okay this is the one I try now to get a repeatable extrusion. I zoom a little bit in. Yeah, it looks not bad. And I do the same here. And move them, this one a little bit higher. And it looks good too. Okay, now I extrude this element from my cube, from my helper object. Don't forget to set the depth to the right the right depth so I say 500 percent it's very high you yeah, are not very high but okay let's say 1000 okay oops 1000 yeah now you see the red curve represents my height and now I click on return and it will be extruded to this size very good now I move back to my rectangle selection and what I do now is I close my projection because I don't need it anymore at the moment and switch to the top view. Um, I will move my object a little bit to the right side here so you can see it better. Here it is. Okay, this will be my repeatable part. And now what I do is I cut off all the elements that are not needed anymore here in this layer. Oops, wrong. I must go back to the rectangle. So, so I cut off this. And now the cube will be cut off. And I cut off that one. Yeah. So here it is. And you see it looks not bad. Maybe I do a little bit smoothing on it, but only once or twice because I it looks better here smooth maybe one time again that's okay now I have the pattern here that can be repeated now to move my pattern to the center I must first move my gizmo to the center object so to do this you just move your your uh, center move only uh, to bound center and now it will be centered into my object and now I move my object back to the center of the scene here by clicking on this X now it's in the scene very important is uh, that you click for sure on the right mouse button and say to global space so the coordinates of this object object now will be resetted to zero Okay, now I move this object up here. I hope it's the right position, so forgive me when I'm not right later. Oh no, I think it's not re really good. I reset it to the center and move it a little bit here. And now what I do is now I am using the where it is, I'm looking at. 
the the axial tool. So here it is. Here you can see the axial tool. Very nice. Really important. And I want this tool to be used to the x axis. No. Wait a second. Yeah, to the z axis. And now I can repeat the elements sometimes. That looks good. But I guess I have used the wrong one. It looks nice, but it's not what I want. <laughs> really funny. Okay, uh, sorry, but it's not the axial tool. It's looking good, but it's not the axial one. It's a walk tool. So what I do, I use the walk tool. You have not applied the axial transform. Do you want to apply it? No. Okay. Um, what I do now is I want to bend my elements here in the x in the z axis, and um, to um, to don't. Um, what I want to do is not to bend it. I want to repeat it. To do this, you you must first um, say how much segments will be repeated. So when I'm doing more segments then I see more of them and now wait a second 360 degrees and no step scale and some lower and overlap thing by all wait okay you have to you see um, set the overlap to zero the step scale needed to be by one because um, it it moves the 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 axis or the object you know so one these are the values you need and 360 because i want to move around the whole axis so now i'm able to to uh, move them here around this object the problem is when I'm moving my axis, then it don't fit to this element here. To solve this, you just do the following. Before you do this, you move your no, you move your object to the right position. In my, in my um, again, oh, sorry, not this one. You need to move your your hammer head to the right position. I blend off my other object and take now my hammer head and uh, blah, blah, and move it down <coughs> to zero and move this object to this position because it helps me to make the right object. So okay now you see my hammer is positioned to, to the place where I need it I can correct it later again, but I need it now for this object. Okay, then you move now to to the warp tool. And when I switch my hammer off, you can see it works very nice. Uh, but it's a little bit too far in my object. To do this, I am going back to transform and move it, move it a little bit outside in this way. The very important is that your center will be moved outside here. Then it works. Great. Um, let's see it a bit. I move it not so far into the object. Okay. You will see why. And now I go back to my warp. And as I can see, it works very nice. It repeat my element. Here in this way, you can change the amount of your segments. And you see they fit always together but uh, the amount says how how thin or how far um, is are the objects uh, yeah how good they represent the origin or the concept artwork good um to you can you can if you have the a value of one you can in overlap you can steer how much the object intersect there, there you can make some very nice effects or you can try to avoid the seams um, 
in this uh, example I forgot to to get some more place some more room here to to use the overlap tool so I um, it became a little bit ugly because of the scene but it's not very very tragic okie dokie now before you click on apply be sure you are not merge to separate instances because then every of this object will be instant instanced so a separate object to to not do this click on merge merge off here and say okay now it is one object you can see it can be moved to one object and can be used for this here to reset your access first click on uh, reset access and then to bound center now it will be in the center of the object. As you see, my object is not exactly in my X. So what I do now is I move it the uh, epsilon to zero. It goes a little bit up, and the one to zero, yeah, all to zero. Maybe I move it by hand. Okay, then it looks good. Okay, great. And then I move it to this to this way here. So what I why I need this? Why do I need this? I need my helper object now. I could uh, let it be like it is. So I could uh, implement it into into this hammer like a uh, extrusion. But what I do now is I will uh, I will subtract it from my hammer. Rune helper hammer head is here, and I try it again right mouse button remove intersection with my rune helper yes now it works you see that is what I wanted to do the rune helper intersection is now gone uh, is now subtracted from my from my hammerhead here is the helper again and here is the representation looks very nice and in this way you can do this to for this object too. Now I um, um, I switch my rest to see the object. Wait, there's the uh, origin hammer front. Yeah. Now I need my head and set them back to zero, to zero, and back to the position where I need it here. Okay. Looks not bad, maybe a little bit to this position. Okay, that's good. I try to do it from the top. Yeah, good. This is now the result from our our trick here to do this. I will do the same now for for this element but I will stop the video at the moment and you you can you can imagine what I've done here I will switch on when I'm here at the part where to to move the things oh, anyway wait a second I will be back and show you it here at the position okay here we are I have created the same here for this part and I move it now to the right position Center here and move it down. Oops, move it down to this position and here. And now I will turn it a little bit. The problem is when I'm turning it, then it don't fit really good. But there is a small tool in 3D Code where you can do it and fit it the right position. So the first one is move. There you can move your object to the right position. It's a little bit tricky and needs uh, needs uh, some some time. The better one, the better way I open the scene again. Okay. The better way to do this is to pose in the pose tool. So what I do now is um, 
I can do it by select first my object be careful that you are selecting the whole one it, uh, ignore back faces must be switched off then you will select the whole object so in this in this way you can now use a free gizmo it's here at the start then fit it fits now to this position and now you are able to move this elements here and can now really nice position the the model to your oops to the right position I change the button okay need a little bit time to do this but it works okay and now to get this point here now I get this one Here, this is uh, the polygon or the site, the whole site. Down. Okay. Looks okay, dokey. Maybe a bit higher. So now I take this one too. A bit down. Mhm. Mm looks okay I will switch the cord off, off to see more okay if it's okay then you say return and it will be taken here it is very nice and now the same I get now the um, handle ring this is this one and I will go now to the handle ring here it is and say right mouse button remove intersections from helper 2 and now I blend my helper 2 off and see it looks okay it was a little bit too much as you see so what I what I do now is I will scale the helper a little bit you can do this by using transform I make it bigger and yeah that's okay okay great and go back to the handle ring right mouse button again right mouse button intersections and helper 2 now I switch them off and you see it looks very nice yeah and I go now to the handle ring and say make it a little bit smoother here smooth all smooth all thank you and uh, switch my cord on and now you see it looks very nice okay. <clears throat> so this is my tutorial for today I hope you have learned something and the next time in my next tutorial we will start to retopologize this object and uh, yeah that's all for today i wish you a very nice day and we will see us next time bye bye